Well, hello everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. So many good things happening today. First of all, we'll just say happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers or mother figures. We also think about those of you who yearn to be moms, but we come together as God's family and live in his love. So happy Mother's Day to all of you. This is really an exciting day because we are coming back into the sanctuary for the first time since the, since the 8th of March, 2020. It's been 15 months. So if you signed up to come to church at 10 o'clock today here in the sanctuary, we're looking forward to seeing you. If you are a walk-in, we will leave some space for walk-ins as well. But know that when you get here, we'll have you get your mask on, sanitize your hands, and then we'll give you a seating assignment. And uh, that's the way we'll do it now for the foreseeable future here at church. Going forward, our 8.30 parking lot service will stay. We're going to keep doing that out there. 10 o'clock in here in the sanctuary. Always register for the in-sanctuary service by 3 p.m. on Fridays. All you have to do is go to www.sjlcl.org. We just keep repeating that, but that's where everything is. Uh, you'll register for worship, and then we'll see you on Sundays. And we'll rejoice in this moment of hope. This is really tangible movement forward. And I'm so excited with you to welcome you home, welcome you back to St. John's in a new way. In your Easter season toolkit, you'll find the information for Sunday, May 9th. There's a poem there by Gerhard Frost entitled, It Had Better Be True. I hope you'll read that because it's all about trust. It's all about faith, which is what the sermon is about today. So this is a companion piece. Please join me now as we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another as we continue our worship. Dear friends, we worship as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take these few moments now as a time for your own personal confession and prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Everyone, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of justification, with great joy, we receive the gift of salvation, which is ours not because of our own efforts, but because of the saving work of Christ. Grant us full access to the glory of your salvation, an abundance that is more than enough for all humankind, for the sake of our redeeming Christ. Amen.
The focus reading for Sunday, May 9th is from Galatians. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son to me, so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being. Nor did I go to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me, but I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood self-condemned, for until people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. And other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Jesus Christ so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, it is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I built up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if just justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and welcome to our children's sermon today on this very special Mother's Day. So kids, if you are sitting around the TV, come close. Um, I've got a fun little activity for you to do, and we're going to talk a little bit about faith, grace, and what Jesus loves, that Jesus loves us. So, to start off, I have here a bag of water. So, what do you think I'm going to do with this? Well, what would you think would happen if I started poking holes in here, what would, what do you think would happen? I've got my lap here and, and carpet behind me. What, what do you think your parents would say if you did this? They say, stop. Well, you know what? Life is hard sometimes and we can't always um, control when we feel like we are getting kind of poked. Sometimes things happen to us, right? This year, especially we've had changes in plans we've had covid we've been in school and we've been out of school we have had possibly grandparents come and then they couldn't come right we've had birthdays that we haven't been able to celebrate we can go on and on and on right can you think i've got a whole bunch of pencils here and i bet we could keep poking holes in this bag for everything that we have had challenges and obstacles this year, right? We've had so many. So, but did you wonder why this water did not spill on my lap? Well, it's a pretty cool science terminology, but the, um, the polymers or the, the little tiny molecules that make up this plastic bag, they just close right around and seal 
um, with that pencil, that's just kind of how a bag works. It kind of clings to things and it makes it a really good storage um, vessel, right? So those pencils are going to keep those holes plugged and um, the holes are, we're not, are not going to leak water. Having faith and trust in God is a bit like trusting that you won't get wet or that I wouldn't get wet when I held that bag over, um, over me because even when I kept poking holes through it, I didn't get wet. And we can trust God, kind of like that, even when it seems like everything is going wrong. He loves and cares for us. In our lesson today, a man named Paul, who was chosen by God, after Jesus died to tell everyone about Jesus and start new churches. But Paul had to keep assuring them to have trust and faith in God, to be kind to one another and know that grace of God is enough. Jesus died for our sins, period. Having faith when you get getting poked, um, here, look, look, it's not dripping yet. Um, having faith when you keep getting poked and prodded by life's challenges, remember, we can trust God. God will be there for us. Jesus loves you. He came here to tell us how um, God had a plan for us and that we would always be safe in the palm of God's hands, right? Even when we feel things are going tough, we know and trust that God is with us. And we're going to be okay. Thank you so much for joining me today for our children's sermon. I hope to see you soon. Take care and God bless you. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Since we are on the Apostle Paul today in Galatians, I will start the sermon this morning with one of his greetings. So, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day to all of you who are moms and mother figures. May this day today be a day of special love and care, just as it is a day of love and care for all who yearn to be mothers. Happy Mother's Day. The title of this message today is, It's All About Faith. But what I really want to tell you is that it's really all about grace. And then it's about our faith, which is trust in this undeserved, completely free gift from God called grace that truly saves us and is saving everybody. It's saving grace for everyone. Can you simply, but not simplistically, but simply trust this, that God's grace is for you and that it saves you and is saving grace for everyone? Can you put your faith in the God who created you and created God's own holy, perfect image in you and in everyone? 
Can you put your faith in our God to love us so joyfully and deeply in spite of all the ways we disappoint and even spurn our Creator and to love us still now and forever in pure grace, pure love that overcomes everything, always, and then redeems us and remakes us anew over and over and over again. Can you put your faith in that? This is God's prerogative, isn't it? Sure is. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying today. Saving us and gracing us with undeserved love is God's work. It's not ours. Our job is to realize this is everything. And then to let that sink in. And let it really expand our hearts of gratitude for God. So that it remakes us as people of expanding, joyful gratitude in all we are. God's rescuing us from sin and from our own arrogance and ego of thinking that we can do everything ourselves, even to the point of thinking that our faith in God should get the last word. God's rescuing us from that is everything. God says, no, 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 no. You don't get the final word. And you should be thankful about that. You can't save yourself. Only I can do that. And only I get to do that. And I want to. And I will. And I will love you into life over and over and over again. I will love you into new life over and over and over again, whether or not you know it, and probably whether or not you even want it. Paul Tillich, perhaps the most erudite, intelligent theologian of the 20th century, after writing his extremely challenging Christian theology of how God interacts with us and the world, finally simply said about God's grace, Accept the fact that you are accepted. Accept the fact that you are accepted. This is faith. Just accept that you are accepted by God. Gerhard Ferdi, late theologian at Luther Seminary, said, Now that you know you are saved by the grace of God, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> faith is our grateful response of really examining how we live our lives and whether our lives look consistent with who the loving, graceful, generous, redeeming God of our existence is. That's faith in God's grace. So, now that you know you are saved by God and his free, limitless grace... What are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know what I just really love? There is this marinated pesto garlic chicken breast they sell at Hy-Vee or Von Hansen's that is just out of this world. The beauty of the whole thing is that that chicken breast doesn't only have that marinade around the outside of it, but, of course, it's been soaking in that marinade for quite a while. So the flavor and the spices have seeped in and have taken up residence throughout that whole chicken breast. Every bite has that flavor in it all the way through. Well, what if I told you that I just want you to be like that piece of chicken? I want you to just sit and relax in the marinade of God's fully encompassing, all-loving, all-sufficient grace for you, free. There's lots of that marinade of that grace to go around, too, and it's just been given to you to surround you and fill you 
and change you more and more into the grace and flavor of God. And the flavor of that grace of God, of course, is ultimately just out of this world, but it's also the most satisfying, enjoyable flavor in this world. It takes over, and it flavors every part of you the longer you marinate in it. <laughs> Imagine this for yourself. Just, just go with me and Imagine it. Imagine over time the flavor of God within you as you put trust in his beautiful love and his zest in you, changing you, taking over more and more, even after times of not acting in concert with the God of love who is in you. Yet over time, the more you marinate, your response to your own sin becomes more and more contrite and more and more genuine and more and more desirous of wanting God to help you renew your faith in his forgiving grace. The more you let God's marinade fill you, this is the life of faith. And for us people for whom Christ has not only died out of pure grace, but has also taken us with him into his crucifixion, we realize, like that delicious pesto garlic marinade, we realize he is now taking up residence in us, gracing us, changing us over and over again, renewing us from the inside out with his love and forgiveness and even his strength and is calling us every single day, every single moment, in fact, to sense and be his flavor in the world with our lives. It's all about faith. Your trust in God's grace that surrounds and fills you and saves you and transforms you. God's act, freely done. So, Sit back right now. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes even. And then take in all the saving, redeeming, and joyful love God freely has for you and places within you through Christ. Come on, do it. Sit back. Relax. Accept the fact that you are accepted and saved, and soak it in. This is saving eternal grace that Christ died and rose for. And now that you know this, what are you going to do about it with your life? Words, actions, impact on others, and with your very being. See, it is no longer you who lives, <laughs> but it is Christ who lives in you. The life you now live in the flesh, you live by faith, by trust in the Son of God, the very limitless grace of God for you, for me, for every living being, for the world God so loves and is saving. Be Christ's flavor for the sake of the world and for the sake of Jesus Christ, your crucified and risen Savior. Amen.
Join me now as we confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now as the church in prayer. Let us pray. For your church on earth, O Lord, that it may continue to proclaim your grace and love to all people and open its doors ever more widely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For nurses, physicians, EMTs, all who care for people in their time of need or pain, we give you thanks. Bless them with the continued zeal of their calling to minister in care to your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our return to indoor worship today, that it be a light of hope and joy of a healthier future for all. We pray each person would do his or her part for the health of the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who do not know your grace and love, O Lord, that they might hear the good news even from us and come to believe in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are in pain, O Lord, we name your beloved people in our heart who are in need of you today. That your comfort and healing might be worked in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. More and more thankful for your grace, please guide us in the path of discipleship, O Lord, that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and deeds. We pray this all in your name, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, everyone, go in Easter peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will. Go God's way this week and live in the light and joy of his grace. We'll see you next week. God be with you until we meet again.